Hi friends, today I just want to make a video that hopefully inspires you and challenges you in your creative pursuits. And how do you inspire people and challenge people in their creative pursuits? Well, you refer to traditional Japanese art aesthetics. Ah yes, there is a foundation of Japanese art aesthetics that is called wabi-sabi. Now what is wabi-sabi you might ask? Well wabi-sabi is a principle that allows for imperfection in art and in life that sees the beauty of imperfection. There are plenty of videos that break down this principle in great detail. I'm not going to go into great de detail about the principle itself, but the application of the principle. In our culture, we tend to emphasize the beauty of perfection, looking for mere perfection in our art. This is represented in a, a cinematic film. This is represented in Instagram and social media. We want to we want to portray polish. This is represented in photography. We go after symmetry. We go after perfect white balance and perfect exposure and perfect focus. That is actually a thing. If you listen to basically any music that has been produced since 1910, there's a high emphasis on polish and clean sounding recordings. At the least, a studio album is being recorded in a completely silent sound treated room. The singer is singing an inch from the mic as to not introduce any other uh, extraneous noises that one does not want to have. There's a science to how mics are set up on drums and guitar amps and there's a pop filter in front of the vocalist's face so that when they say P words they don't pop. It's all set up for maximum control and all across the practices of art you have what we would call the standard of excellence that one should meet in order to be taken seriously in what they're up to. But we find what I would call beautiful imperfection all around us. It's represented in nature, it's represented in people and our conversations on a daily basis, our filler words, our inability to express a thought um, coherently and, and brilliantly like we may want to. It's represented in my interaction of small talk with my, the barista up the street when I say things that I feel like are horribly stupid. Scars are great representations of imperfections in us that often have a beautiful story behind them that might involve something traumatic. <laughs> I have I have this cut on my hand, and this cut was created by a stupid move of me when I was cutting towards myself. I was trying to cut a, a, a zip tie. I did not cut away as one should do if trying to avoid chopping all of their extremities off. I cut towards myself, sliced my hand, I had a plethora of stitches that had to be put in there to keep all of my blood from falling out of my body. If you choose to look for it, you can find beauty in all of these situations. They oft the scars often represent learning situations, and that's just the physical scars. We also have the emotional scars, mental scars. These are full of beauty but also full of trauma, and often those two go hand in hand. But I admire artists who are able to incorporate imperfections into their work in a way that creates things such as a feeling of authenticity. I think about the work of great photographers such as Robert Capa, famous war photographer, Bruce Gilden and his crazy wild portraits. I think of improvisational music where the point is not polished perfection, but this, this exuberant expression of art from within on the fly. Podcasting is greatly enjoyed by people because of this, and I think one specific reason why podcasting is enjoyed by people is because it, it fills a gap that is left when a lot of art culture is pushing towards perfection and digestibility and polished and uh, the, the drive to make it as engageable as possible, thus removing authenticity. I love when I'm listening to a podcast about something that, that involves a very intriguing subject and they're wrestling to try to find their thoughts. They're trying to put it all together and express it. I also think vlogs and the shaky, not all vlogs, but a lot of vlogs, the shaky camera, talking about the frustrating parts of life, the things that got in your way that day that kept you from achieving your goals. It's engaging, it's human, it pulls us all together and creates a sense of community. The interesting thing is that both the pursuit of perfection and wabi-sabi 
is valid. Both of them are good things. I think the goal is to try to achieve a harmony between the two of those, and that's different for everyone. There's something magnificent and overwhelming about watching an orchestra play a composition of one of the great composers of our time with excellence. There's also something overwhelming and magnificent about listening to somebody on a podcast or on stage share their heart with raw authenticity and say something that's truthful and important. Both can leave everyone in the room in tears by the end. I think that what this principle speaks to is the importance of allowing experimentation to occur in your art and in your life. And this has as much to say about our life as it does about our art. And it, it also speaks to the, important of re uh, the importance of redefining failure in your work on a daily basis. That if you misstep in your process, and maybe that's a, a small misstep, and maybe that's a, an enormous misstep that lands you in $250,000 of debt or burns your house down, <laughs> that this is something that is part of the journey of life. Allowing yourself to be a, a bit more laid back and risk inviting in what you're up to might be a good idea. I get this idea in my head that is absolutely pervasive, that perfection is the goal. And I have to remember that it's okay to allow myself to improvise and enjoy the journey of figuring out the thing I'm creating as I go, that there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's not a lack of excellence. If you can get your brain around letting go of some of that control in your work and in your daily life, it's it's liberating. And if you want to get better at that and if you're struggling with that, I would encourage you to engage, enjoy, be inspired by people and artists who do that well. They embrace improv they, em they embrace improvisation, experimentation, failure, wabi-sabi well. Okay, that's it for this one. I guess the last thing I'll say is that whenever you see wabi-sabi represented visually online, you tend to see like a bowl with like a chip in it and that you're supposed to go, oh, that's beautiful. It's just, it's, it went through something. So next time you, your plate falls out of your cabinet and hits the floor and shatters into a million pieces and you step on it and chop your feet up and then your dog chops their feet up. Wabi-sabi. Tell me what you think. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.